Welcome to the Unicorn Pasture. Hi, I'm Reverend Lunch Lady. I am a love coach, a unicorn wrangler. I help single women create meaningful, lasting love. What I like to call unicorn love, which is the kind of love you may not think actually exists, but it does. So in this video, I'm going to give you some success principles for dating. And the way I do this is I channel the grandmas, the lunch ladies in the cosmos through Detto Lady Secret Recipe Tarot. Triple trademark, super top secret, something that was given to me as a way to bring the universal laws of love down to the earth because what they know on the other side is that love is possible no matter what you're feeling right now no matter what limitations are trying to convince you that you can't have what you want in your heart i promise that if you're here there's an answer for you so this morning i pulled a card from this deck and today we got a card that will bring us some core success principles for dating. So if you struggle with the modern dating world and it feels overwhelming or you're frustrated or you're like, where are the good ones? I get it. So today's card is date cookies. That's why we know it's dating success principles. And there are some key elements I want to address here. If you haven't been here before, trust that there's a message here for you. So the first one, is about dating multiple people at once. So when you're first putting yourself out there, you do wanna go on a bunch of dates. You do want to get to know a lot of different people. And there, cause they say there's three eggs. So that tells us that there's multiple bodies that wanna play in this field. So it's really important that as you put yourself out there, you start through these dates seeing what you like and you don't like even through a bad date if you follow the law of attraction you know that through the contrast you get information on what it is that you actually want because what's missing tells you more of what you want so it's important to really pay attention to that and bring in the space so that you can get to know a lot of different people and then over time you'll see who is leaning in and you'll see where you're leaning in and you'll have more knowledge about is this person aligned with my values is this person aligned with my lifestyle so that's number one date multiple people don't be afraid of that number two is stop filling up so what does that mean on the first date if you have nerves or you get anxious some of the tendencies can be to go and, and and approach it like well is this person right i need to know what's the answer is this person my person or not and that energy can create an experience of wanting to share everything about you wanting to find out everything about them, wanting to look for all the red flags, wanting to try to figure everything out in one day. Take that strategy off the table. This, what they're inviting you, what the lunch ladies in the, the Unicorn Kitchen Council are inviting you to consider is just show up and see what's there. At this point, if you're going on a first date, I would have imagined you've already had some dialogue, you've already created a strong vision of love, you've already kind of considered some filtering and vetting techniques. So on the first date, this is the chance to be in their presence, to, to allow them to show you who they are, to see if their words have matched like what they're showing you now. So not trying to, you know, express route and figure out, is this my husband? Is this my wife in one date? So when you do this, the energy is different. So you'll notice that when you can lean back and just stay curious, 
and wonder, okay, I wonder what, what this person is all about. The energy opens up and it's more expansive. When you're going from a place of, I need to know right now, that's a more contracted energy. And the way that we grow into relationships that turn into long-term relationships, engagement, marriage, whatever that is that you want, I suspect if you're here, you want a lasting relationship, like you want to have someone to spend your life with, then it's really important to practice this kind of presence. The third thing is that to be aware of, they say, cool off after it thickens. And what that means is if you notice that you come to the date and you're like, oh, this is it, this is everything, and you're feeling this whirlwind of chemistry and attraction, and you're you're wanting to just plan the wedding date right away, <laughs> maybe that's an exaggeration, but it may feel like that, then they're saying cool off, like step back, make sure that if you're feeling like a real strong swooping away of emotion, that you're being instructed to step back and do a quality check. See, does this person match my values? Is this person actually right for me? Does this person truly, and you have to be really honest with yourself, is this person um, aligned? Because in the, the chemistry and all of that, it can be really easy to say, well, you know, maybe they'll change or that doesn't really matter. And they are inviting you to take that part a little more seriously like make it important that you take time to do that kind of quality check on values and what matters to you and of course you do want attraction and chemistry and relationship but that is something that can evolve and grow in time when you have a good quality person in your life so so just know that then the next thing that they want to remind you of is to be aware of how you are your assumptions about what it means to date or what you assumptions about what you think men or women want because if you are acting out of well this is what i should do on a date or this is how it should be then you're really cutting yourself off from a lot more possibilities so really notice if the way you're dating is perhaps even copying something you've seen in a movie or on tv or how your best friend fell in love or even your parents like any of that stuff they are inviting you to just check in and check and see like where you're coming from and this is a consciousness thing this is a subtlety and it may be uh hard to know but it's basically a question like you know where am i responding or dating from an old idea or a a modeling after something that may not be mine and sometimes you can just kind of tune into the question you know where am i doing that that's not actually me that if i could let go of that then i could be more of me then you can just kind of clear some energy there it's a good space and then the final thing is sort of along those lines, number five, which is notice if your insecurities or anxieties around dating are, are taking over and making it hard for you to be yourself. Because if you find that you default to people pleasing or you notice that you hide things because you're afraid, oh, well, they probably won't like this or this isn't lovable or whatever you fear that maybe your opinions won't be received and that you could scare someone away or 
whatever that is that comes up, just notice if you're working from a lot of that fear, then that really is an indication that there is more inner work to do. And certainly if any of these things are challenging, I encourage you to to share with me. Email me at macy at bighappylove.com or comment below what you're noticing is a challenge or a struggle for you so that we can talk about it and we can move you forward al along the path. Because I know that if in your heart is this desire, this real vision of sharing your life with someone, it really is such a sacred thing and and I encourage you to want what you want I encourage you to trust that whatever's in your heart is possible and that you know you can have it and that's what you know the dead old ladies want you to know that love is the most important thing and that what they know from the other side is that it's worth doing whatever it takes and for for most of us, and I'm guessing all of you who are here listening to this, that this is part of your mission. This is part of your destiny. So let this be your miracle, this interaction. And certainly I'm here to help. If you want to talk about this more, if you want some handholding, if you want some support, you may just be a perfect candidate for my one-on-one -on -one coaching program called Love Muffin. I'd love to chat with you about it. And I'm just so grateful for you being here. So let's go over the five again. The first one is don't be afraid to date multiple people. Three eggs. Get some people in the mix so that you know what, more about what you like and what you don't like. And let that just be part of the process. And then once you get to know someone, then you can take it to the next level. The second one was to, oh, make sure you're not focused on trying to figure it all out in the first date. Like, I need to know, I need to know. Notice the energy of, is this my person? Versus, hmm, I wonder what this person is and letting them show you who they are. Because that is the most valuable thing is to be able to see people, to listen, to get to know, and then over time you will. It takes time. It takes time to get to know someone. And then the third one is, if you notice big chemistry, you're getting swooped away by, you know, love at first sight, be aware and pause and do a quality check and match it up to your vision. Is this person aligning with my values and who I am? And really just step back. That's what they're saying. The third one is to notice if Consider, just ask your consciousness, your soul, hey, am I modeling off of my parents or something I saw on TV, Carol Brady, I don't know, a, around relationship and dating. What is it that's actually true for me? And just opening up to, I am choosing to let anything go that's keeping me from, from really being my whole self in this experience. And then the final one is, are you noticing that your insecurities and fears are keeping you in the people-pleasing mode? They are really saying it's so important that you do whatever it takes to really get to the bottom of that so that you're not reacting out of fear. Because when you're doing that, when you're reacting out of fear, or you're worried that they're, you're going to scare them away, you're actually not you. So the thing is, it's okay if you scare some people away. You want to scare away the ones that aren't right for you, coming from that honest place and not really scare away, but you want to be able to vet people out who aren't a good match for you as fast as possible so that you know, you can find your perfect person. And really it's important there to not make it a personal thing, that this isn't a, a bad thing. It's not about you, it's about the other person. If it's not a match, it's just not a match and you get to move on. That's true for everyone. So really also notice, cause sometimes that people pleasing thing in the reverse becomes, oh, well, 
I'm not good enough, I, I'm broken, or some other things that also are equally damaging to helping you, you know, really open up to a really happy, healthy relationship. So thank you so much for being here. Will you share with me what parts were helpful? Say, share in the comments, wow, you know, I got something out of that. Even if you just type yum, because something landed for you, that works for me. And certainly I'd love to chat with you if you want to know more. Hallelunicorn love is here for you. Bye.